Number seven then from paper two of the 2017 New Higher Maths. Here we go. Greatest and least values in an interval. Yes, it's mentioning stationary points, but notice it's not interested in their nature because their nature is actually irrelevant to this type of question. And it's seven marks here. The first part is simply find just the x coordinate of the stationary point on the curve with this equation. No mention of finding its nature, just what's the x coordinate of the stationary point. Well, that'll be differentiate. Once it's ready to go, this term needs sorted out. So it's 6x minus, the 2 is fine. The 3 is a power, and that's a square root, so it's power 3 upon 2. Doing that gets the first mark. Now, dy by dx then, differentiate it. So that'll just be 6, the coefficient of linear term. This will be multiplied by 3 upon 2, so it'll just be minus 3. You can write 2 times 3 upon 2, then you have to cancel it down. Take 1 off the power, which is quite nice because it still keeps it positive. That's like take away 2 halves, so that becomes 1 half. Next part, because the marks seem to be a bit jumbled up here. I think I've seen this before. Next part is this, stationary. Stationary point, well that means dy by dx equals 0. I don't see a mark for stating that explicitly. The mark seems to come for, from equating it to zero. Now there's actually two marks here because you've got the differentiation and you've got it equated to zero. But they're not just given the marks as one and one, which seems to make sense. The marks go differentiate one term, then differentiate the other term and equate it to zero. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. I'm just going to separate them like that because that's the obvious steps, isn't it? Get it into a differentiable form, differentiate it, state that if it's a stationary point, it must be equal to zero. Now it's just a case of solving that. Well, there's only one mention of x here, so you can solve it by removing the parts. Well, first thing I think I'll do is I'll do three, I'll rewrite it as root x maybe. No, you need to because that's such a simple little one, but well, anyway. Three root x equals six. So root x equals 2, still no marks. And then finally, square both sides, x equals 4. There's a mark. Part B, determine the greatest and least values. You have to watch, there's no mention of stationary points or maximum turning points or minimum turning points. It's just greatest and least values in an interval. And here's the interval here. Because what happens is, if you've got some function or other, the greatest and least values in an interval means you're sort of drawing the curtains in. You're drawing the curtains in, in it, and you're just looking at a particular part. And for a, a simple function, the greatest and least values will occur at the boundaries. So in this case, it should happen at 1 and 9. The only time it might not be at 1 and 9 would be if it has a wee twist or turn in between. And strictly speaking, it doesn't matter what the nature of that twist or turn is because its value will speak for itself. The only way you could exceed these two points in the boundaries being the maximum minimum would be if you had a stationary point in between. That just means there are three candidates here for the maximum minimum. The ones you've got to consider, and I'll put it down this way, the ones you would consider are the primary candidates, which are one and nine, plus any stationary value that happens to lie inside that window in that interval, which in this case is just the four. So you've got these three candidates. Which is the biggest, which is the smallest? Suck them and see. Just put them into this and see which gives the biggest answer, which gives the smallest. There's no other way. And there's no simple factorization for that, so we'll just have to do that calculation. So you just work them out one at a time. X is one into this. If x is 1, y will be 6 times 1 minus 2 times the square root of 1 cubed. That's just a 1, so that's 6 minus 1, so that's 4. I'll put it over here. Right, that tells me nothing so far. That could be the biggest, it could be the smallest, it might not be anything. x equals 4. y equals 6 times 4 minus 2 times the square root of 4 cubed. Now, you could put that into a calculator. Remember, you can do those in any order, the square root and the cube. So that would actually be better done as the square root of 4 is 2, cube it is 8, that comes to 16. And 24 minus 16 is 8. Oh, well, that's now taken first place. That could still win as the lowest, though, if that's winning. What about 9? No idea. Until you put it in and see. 
6 times 9 minus 2 times the square root of 9 cubed. Same principle, put it in your calculator because it is paper 2 after all, or do the square root first. So that means you've got the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times, I'm sorry, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, that's 54, but that's also 54, so that's 0. Well, there's your three values to compare. And quite simply, what was the wording again? What's the greatest? The greatest is 8, so I'll just write that down. Greatest value, whoops, equals 8. Doesn't ask when, but I'll just put it in anyway, since I went to all that trouble. When x is 4, so I did need that one. And least, I presume, is the other one, yes. Least value is 0. And since I went to the trouble, I may as well say when it happens, when x is 9. Now, there was one point for getting... Basically, there was just two marks altogether for this bit. So it was one for the 8 and one for the other 2. But quite honestly, any one of those has got equal claim to it. And the last one was for stating the greatest and least explicitly. Not just leaving it up to you to, or the marker rather, to say, oh yes, they've got 8, it's the biggest. The greatest is 8, least is 0. And I didn't even ask for that. And I really should have.